prisoners in jail get better treatment than now I got. I was not treated like a human being in any way, shape or form. Stepping Hill Hospital in Stockport, a scared, confused and vulnerable man pushed into an airless, windowless room by a security guard. When we visit Stephen Eddy's at his home, he replays it over and over. I was stretched through to a &E and put in a cubicle. And that was for hours and hours and hours. This was on one of the hottest nights of 2018. Stephen had been taken to hospital by ambulance. He was agitated complaining of chest pains and struggling for breath. He was held for 11 hours without treatment, without food, without water. As he grew increasingly anxious, he tried to escape and lashed out. The redhead. I keep on coming back to him every time. It was him, 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 all the time. When I was having nightmares, I could see him in my face, close as that. Effing and blinded. Do this, do that, do this, do that. It's more than a decade now since these images were shown by Panorama. Winterbourne View, a secure unit for people with learning disabilities. But now Channel 4 News exposes the abuse of vulnerable people not in a secure unit, but in trust hospitals, in the very place they are meant to be safe. This CCTV was obtained via a whistleblower and also from our own Freedom of Information requests to Stepping Hill, as well as from Stephen Eddy's lawyers. It builds up a distressing picture. Stephen was abused. He was falsely imprisoned. Uh, he suffered uh, damaging uh, psychiatric harm. I see the incredible abuse of power and the needless and protracted use of seclusion. A recent government inquiry revealed that abuse still continues to this day in England's secure units. But violence against the vulnerable in mainstream hospitals has not been investigated. We showed the CCTV to Margaret Flynn. She led the serious case review into Winterbourne View. It's shocking that it's happening not merely in our specialist hospitals and private hospitals, but it's also happening in acute hospitals where we least expect it. We know that sometimes clinical staff are, are harmed, so of course we want security staff there. Stephen was very conspicuously not someone who was drunk and dangerous, he was distressed. And we would expect there to be some maturity of decision making around how to intervene. If it's happening here, then of course it's likely to be happening elsewhere. Channel 4 News has now uncovered that at Stepping Hill alone, there were two other cases similar to Stephen's in the two months, May and June 2018. In total, three security guards were dismissed. But we can reveal that there appears to be a widespread problem. We placed freedom of information requests with 127 trusts across England. Now, not all of them could or would respond, but of the 23 who came back to us, they had recorded nearly 5,000 occasions when physical interventions were made by security teams against patients. And that was just in the space of three years. Now, not all of those patients would have been vulnerable. Sometimes those interventions might have been necessary, but the fact is that information in itself isn't recorded. There's lots of people out there that don't even realize they've been assaulted. Michael, not his real name, was a security guard at a hospital in the southeast of England. I've seen a child handcuffed to a chair in the A&E. I've seen patients with blankets wrapped around their legs tight so they couldn't walk away. I've seen that scenario where they've been put in arm bars 
uncomfortable restraints that are predominantly pain compliant. The abuse was so regular that he and a colleague kept detailed notes and logs. He has shown them to us. The more you twist it, the more pain they inflicted. Government guidelines say restraint should be the last resort. Michael says it's the easiest option. And patients are harmed on a daily basis. In extraordinary and upsetting detail, Michael revisited for us the abuse he had personally witnessed. They were treating, say, a 90-year-old or an 80-year-old dementia patient the same way as a drunk, aggressive 25-year-old in a nightclub. It would vary. You could have five in five minutes or you could have five in a day. There was more chance of you getting a written warning for not turning up to work than there was dragging a patient back to their bed. Three years after Stephen's abuse at the hands of guards, the Stockport NHS Foundation Trust, which runs Stepping Hill, admitted unlawful detention and assault. They settled out of court. In a statement, they told us, in 2018, we had concerns about the way three former members of our security team behaved towards three patients in three separate incidents. We took swift action to address these concerns, including informing the police. The way the patients were treated was entirely unacceptable. We have sincerely apologized to the patients and have taken steps to ensure such distressing incidents do not happen again. NHS England said any abuse of patients should not be tolerated in the NHS and hospitals who manage their security locally are expected to take action where needed to protect their patients and staff. New laws on the use of restraint and seclusion for medical staff in secure units come into force this autumn. There is no legislation to cover A&E departments or security guards. It feels like repeated history. We get the reports, we get the promises of lessons learned, we get the recommendations, we get the subsequent over-attention of the regulator, the Care Quality Commission, and yet the practice is not halted, it continues. I often sit here on my own thinking about the whole bloody issue. But there again, it's no good me personally dwelling on it, because it's not going to get anywhere, is it? Stephen Eddy's there, ending that report by Victoria MacDonald on an investigation by Channel 4 News and Primate Films.